slow start, but great second half. Appreciate it. <laughs> how, does, how, does it how does it feel to have two running backs over 100 yards today? Yeah, it's great. Uh, it really is. That really is great. I mean, credit the offensive line. Credit those two guys. Credit our receivers out there blocking. Uh, the play calling, just a compliment. Um, to have two two backs both rush for 100 yards, uh, that's great. I mean, that's, that's complimentary still, line, like I said, just really the whole offense. Dak Prescott after the big victory, 31-6. to Quite a statement for the Cowboys, who are 3-0 and and on their way. And, yes, they are. Hey, the Eagles are 1-2. and The Giants are 1-2. and Washington is 0-2 and, and quite possibly on their way to 0-3. Cowboys running away potentially with that division, Chris. Yeah, yeah. well, the Cowboys are a special football team, and the Eagles have not played as well as we have thought. Uh, you know, whether it's uh, uh, the loss last week, the injuries, of course, yesterday to the Lions. Uh, so the, the Cowboys are set up right now to kind of put a stranglehold on the NFC East. Are you ready, good sir, for Let's the trivia it. question? Let's do it. To determine the first pick in the Sunday Statement draft, Patrick Mahomes has the fourth most passing yards ever through three weeks of a football season. Name any of the quarterbacks who are ahead of him on the all-time list. Most passing yards through the first three games of a season. You just have to name one of the three. Oh, gosh. Uh, you know what's crazy is I feel like my dad might be part of this conversation, but I'm going to go with Peyton Manning just to be safe. Oh, no. <laughs> Tom Brady in 2011. Right. Ryan Fitzpatrick last year is number oh, two. Oh, damn. And your good friend Kurt Warner. Kurt in Warner. In 2000. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that's so pretty. Man, go. Ryan Fitzpatrick last year, I totally forgot yeah, about that. Yeah, he was on fire that during the. Uh, it was during the. Jameis Winston suspension, yes, and right. uh, obviously Fitz Magic became Fitz Tragic, as it tends to do. Happen. All right, first pick for me. Uh, look, I, bigger picture New Orleans Saints, smaller picture Alvin Kamara. Right. Yeah. You you don't need to to lean on the quarterback position when you have a guy who is one of the most dangerous weapons in all of football. They don't overuse him, but they use him enough to get it done. And without him yesterday, the Saints don't win that game. Yes, they only had 265 yards of offense, but at the same time, with Kamara, he helps you get through this storm without Drew Brees. And that's the challenge for the Saints. How many games can they get through with victories? This is one they stole that that we did. I thought they had no shot, and they they took it. And having Kamara and having him healthy and having him getting things done, it, you know, 69 yards – rushing but 92 receiving yeah. on those nine receptions from Teddy Bridgewater he can make things happen make people miss look at that just and ends up with the walk-in touchdown after weaving through traffic and bouncing off of guys you have him and uh, you're going to be okay no matter who the quarterback is yeah I mean that was a, a huge statement for that whole football team I mean Alvin Kamara the Saints whatever it may be and it, it's just amazing uh, whether it's Drew Brees or Teddy Bridgewater, the amount of plays I see every week where it's, hey, quarterback, just look down here. I'm going to send a bunch of other people, but the play's really for Alvin Kamara right here. Everything's window dressing just to throw the go – so we, look, we go, oh, wow, what a great read by the quarterback, and I want to go, no. He literally was said, just throw to this guy. It's the only guy we're even calling this play for. I'm amazed with all the ways that Sean Payton finds uh, on a weekly basis to get Alvin Kamara. That was a huge statement for them in that football game. So, yeah, I'm with you as far as Sunday statements are concerned. Hey, let me let me ask you one yeah, question real quick. Yeah. Aren't, isn't it weird Taysom Hill didn't throw a pass yesterday? Yeah, it is weird. I did. I thought it was weird that he didn't have any role. But I I, I guess, again, I guess what I'm, I, we're, we're seeing is he's, you know, maybe a, a little bit scared to throw him in there because he is the true backup now. He doesn't have that little flexibility to go, well, he's really the third string so yeah. I can put him in here and there. You know, now he's really going to save him just in case Teddy does get Good hurt point. or something like that. I, I'm guessing. I, I don't know that, but I guess that's my logic there. As far as Sunday statements go, uh, I think other than the New Orleans Saints, the second biggest Sunday statement is the Detroit Lions. I'm just going to give them. I mean, there they are, the undefeated Detroit Lions. And, yeah, one of those games was a tie on the road against Arizona. But, I mean, to go into Philadelphia yesterday and win that football game, I, I think that says a lot about uh, the direction this Lions football team is going. And, again, I don't know if they're a playoff football team. The NFC North is very competitive, and those are some good football teams. But either way, Matt Patricia has changed the culture uh, in Detroit, as we talk about so much, you know, I mean, and, and it was a tough change to the culture. I mean, the way they play football now, smash mouth football, tight end over the middle, you know, taking shots down the field with with Matthew Stafford. Uh, 
you know, solid defensive play throughout the day. We're a defense that I would say is not that talented and not that special. But uh, to go into Philadelphia and find a way to win that football game, uh, I think it says a lot about Matt Patricia and where the lines are at. Yeah, and I agree with you. And, and look, they, they viewed that first game of the season as a loss, even though it was a tie. Yeah. And they overcame it, and they moved on. And it, just, it feels weird to call the team undefeated when they aren't they don't have a perfect record, right. but they still are undefeated. Still undefeated. And they move forward and they get the Chiefs this yep. weekend. All right, you know, we've talked about a lot of the games in this spot, so I don't want to cover old ground. Right. So I'm going to I'm gonna say that one of the biggest Sunday statements came from Tom Brady, but it wasn't anything he did on Sunday. It was what he tweeted on Thursday night, complaining about all of the penalties because they had a conference call on Saturday night among the officials. They talked about holding and all the holding penalties we've seen yep. throughout the first two weeks plus that extra game Titans Jaguars as a result according to ESPN.com the holding penalties per game plummeted from 5.7 through Thursday night yeah to 2.9 wow yesterday wow so big statement from hashtag Tommy Tommy Brady with his Twitter account influencing the National Football League along with everybody else who was complaining yes, about it right but Tom Brady makes the Sunday statement his Sunday statements are so strong he doesn't even have to make them on Sundays yeah and uh and you know there's this holding penalty we, what, we see this every year uh, free advice to the NFL apply a little foresight sometimes so instead of having to clean up a mess two weeks into the season, like roughing the passer penalties last year, holding this year, let's get it right before the season starts, yeah. can't we? Right. So Because when you do this, right. you do undermine the integrity of the season because the first 33 games of the year were called a under way. the heightened standard. Yes. And now you're putting a different standard out there for the other 223 games of the year. That necessarily affects the integrity of the full season. Yeah, it, it is annoying. I mean, that uh, it's annoying, almost as annoying as your pick there for a non-Sunday That's all right. statement that happened I, on a Friday. I'll do what I want. But either either way, Thursday. apparently you will. But a yeah. tweet on Thursday makes it as a Sunday but statement. But the point I'm was a good one. It. The point is good. The point is that, yes, it was getting out of hand, and there was too many holding penalties where it had nothing to do with the play. You're like, wait, the ball is 40 yards to the right, and we're calling a holding on the left hash on the other side of the field. What the hell are we doing? That's where it started to drive me crazy. It had no influence on the play. So horrible pick by you, great point by you, horrible pick by you. You lose the draft automatically with that pick automatically default okay now getting back to business go ahead go here. ahead talk for three more minutes well, about something you're we're right going to i'm like oh, today. wait wait what? i totally <laughs> lost my train of thought here because i wanted to cry all right my ne next biggest sunday statement okay is going out to san francisco with stats san francisco 49ers yes that's a big statement the 49ers with the bye week on the horizon going into that into the bye week now three and oh i mean that's pretty beautiful and then not only three and oh but to go 3-0 and in a game at home, home opener, where you just play sloppy football and you're playing a desperate Pittsburgh team. And it was sloppy, but yet not sloppy. I mean, the offense was phenomenal with the New I mean, with the San Francisco 49ers. But, you know, hey, interceptions, yeah, some of the quarterback fall, you know, some little tough luck. The fumbles, I mean, the Steelers were hitting out there. But the 49ers weathered the storm and found a way to get a big turnover for themselves there at the end of the game to set them up for the game-winning touchdown. But the 49ers, Mike, I mean, a little like some of the other teams we've talked about, they're kind of finding their way still, and they're not playing their best football, but they're 3-0. and And they got a lot of things about the team that you go, ooh, these are the type of things in your DNA that make teams good. Great offensive line, great defensive line, run the ball on anybody. Uh, and just because of those three aspects right there, it makes it hard. It, it makes them able to match up with any team in football. If you hated my last pick, you're going to despise me. Oh, the here week. we go. What a, well, I'm going back to next Sunday no, for no, this Sunday no, statement. No. This was a statement made on Sunday. Right. Literally a statement made on Sunday. Right. Antonio Brown is done with the NFL okay. as part of a tweet storm that we saw yesterday yes. morning. Turn on any news channel today, and they're going to talk about that before they talk about anything that happened on the field. Yeah. That continues to be the dominant storyline in the NFL as much as we're sick of it. And and it feels like we're at a point where, although who knows with Antonio Brown, he's always one tweet away from turning things upside down again. He says he's done with the NFL. 
the thinking is he really isn't done with the NFL, but he was cut Friday night. As of Saturday, three teams were interested. They wanted to wait to see what happened with the investigation that was pending against him, that is still pending against him, that will still unfold in the coming days and weeks. No one is going to touch him until that investigation is concluded, and now he says he's done with the NFL. And when you start taking shots at people like the owner of the team you most recently played for, your next team may be thinking twice because whoever employs him now is stepping into the spot of being the next future target of Antonio Brown. So who knows what's going to happen going forward. But he made a big statement right. in a variety of different ways on Sunday on Twitter a couple of hours before the game started. All right, one more yep, for you. Okay, at least I'll, I'll take that. At it least happened it happened Sunday. on Sunday. I mean, at least it was I Sunday. I could have said that the, the officials made the statement by not throwing so many holding right, penalties. Right. But I wanted to give Tom Brady credit because I hey, think it did You've done people. a phenomenal job of not talking about football during we Sunday's We talked game about football, it okay? the whole show. Well, good job not talking about football. Okay, go ahead. Here we go. Here we go Sunday statement the Vikings, number three the Packers <laughs> no I'm we've not we've already talked about it yeah give me something we haven't talked about I defy you for your last pick something we haven't talked about already today well is there a game we haven't really hit on yet I don't know if there really is okay I mean uh my it's down to the Bills or the Colts that's who I want to say and I'm gonna go with the Colts okay I don't know if we talked about that in much or not but I'm gonna tell talk about it either way because they made a statement oh one and one Colts and yeah we're not sure what their team is and it's no Andrew Luck and oh we lost to the Chargers in week one and just found a way to win in week two against the Titans well they didn't just find a way to win in week two against the Titans first off that's when I texted you on Friday that I was mad I took the Falcons because I watched the film last week of the Colts versus the Titans. And I went, oh my gosh, the Colts are going to beat the, the Atlanta Falcons. There's no doubt in my mind. Uh, but either way, it was a statement with what they did on Sunday. Everybody, I think, you know, hey, Falcons, high sh- you know, high flying Falcons coming into town. Matt Ryan, they got a win on Sunday night against the Eagles. Watch out. You know, can the Colts really compete and win this type of football game? Well, yeah, they competed and Jacoby Brissett was phenomenal. And he's showing that, yeah, why the Colts might not be like the Chiefs or the Patriots in the AFC, they're that next level team down to where I'd go watch out. And they're certainly playoff caliber. And I'd watch out at having to play them in the playoffs, just like we talked about with the 49ers. I mean, the the one thing with the Colts, will they never be outmatched is their O-line's as good as anybody in football. And their D-line is as good is really versatile and good too. So that was a big statement. They're two and one. I win the draft. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.